Welcome to the Entrepreneur Motivation Podcast. I'm your host, Chris Bello, and today we've got Heather Hakes. <laughs> I'm just thinking, what'd you say? Heather Hakes bakes cakes? <laughs> yeah, growing up, that's how my mom always, when we'd go to restaurants in different places, because people, I don't know how you butcher Hakes, but that's what she always said. So that's what I always say. Yeah, I like that. And same thing with me. It's like, hello, Bello, or I say it rhymes with yellow. That's the easiest way. So people don't add a, yeah. actually, I say hello, because otherwise people add a W at the end of my name. But anyway, let me try to stay focused, you know? <laughs> so yeah. Heather, welcome to the show. It's so great to have you. You are a mindset coach and you're actually based in Denver, Colorado, as I just recently found out. So, so am I. Cool. Hey, neighbor. Hey, neighbor. Yeah, you're not too far. So why don't you go ahead and introduce yourself real quick, like maybe a little bit about your background, what you're working on now, what you're yeah. planning on doing in 2022. Let's hear it. So brief background. Yes, I, I'm originally from Colorado, but I lived in Kentucky and California and Washington, but Colorado is just my home. It's my sweet spot. Yep. I love nature. I love the mountains. And I got into mindset coaching. Um, I've been fascinated by psychology and human potential, honestly, since I can remember. As a young girl in elementary school, I grew up watching Oprah and Dr. Phil and learning about a gratitude journal and the psychology I started reading personal development books when I was 15. I'm currently wow. 36, so a couple of years ago. You started early. I wish I got, got onto it that yeah. early as well. Well, I've always had my mom as a mentor, and you know she's been on her own journey and, and sending it my way. But my first book was The Four Agreements. And then from there, I loved The Alchemist, and, yeah. and I've gone on. I've read so many books. But I did what we're conditioned to do. So I, I went to college, I got a degree, I climbed the corporate ladder, I, I worked in it for 10 years and I hated it. And I, I don't know if I can cuss, but I bitched to complain. Go ahead, yeah, you can cuss. Yeah, I, I, don't, I, I just, don't stop my I guests. <laughs> okay. I complained because it, it, and now I understand, you know, in hindsight, it was my, it was soul sucking to me to be going through the motions of yeah. somebody else's definition of success. So to fast forward, I ultimately in 2017, summer of 2017, I quit my job, which I took a huge leap of faith. I was um, working downtown Denver, oil and gas. I had a pretty cush job, but I hated it. So I took a leap of faith and quit. I had no plan. And I write about this in my book, Take the Leap. But ultimately, I ended up with a six-figure payout, which I didn't know was coming, but it happened after I quit with no plan, following that nudge, following the intuition. There was more for me. I was meant to be doing something else. So all of that led to, I took some time off and I did some bucket list travel and I've met people from all over the world. Um, and, and my experiences led to writing the book and launching my own podcast, Mind Over Matter. And now I've gotten into coaching for the past few years. So to sum up all of that, I am so passionate and fully immersed in the power of mindset. And truthfully, there's so many teachers out there that are telling us this is nothing new. If you want to go back to Think and Grow Rich, Napoleon Hill, we create our reality by what we think about and focus on. We're energetic beings drawing mm -hmm. experiences to us. When you understand that and you take control of your life, no longer that victim mode, life is happening to me, blah, blah. You become this powerful, infinite creator. And that's what I'm passionate about. That's so cool. And I was going to say, like, we kind of have a similar story because I worked in oil and gas, but in Houston, I quit in April 2017. I took a month to go travel Southeast Asia, Japan, all of those different places, because that was the first time that I had money and time before I had yeah. no money and plenty of time in college. Right. And then you go to working the job. You have money and no time in most cases, yeah. unless maybe you've got a flexible position but most people i know that they're slave to the the corporate role they're stuck in the office they're stuck wiggling their mouths even if they're working from home right because they got to check in and calls and stuff like that so i love how you quit and you had no backup plan and you were able to manifest you know amazing things into your life and i love that yeah. that phrase take the leap i've i've used that before as well in um, a couple podcast episodes because it is a leap it's a leap of faith you're stepping out yeah. into the unknown the uncertainty yeah. And you kind of go from there, right? But you had the belief and, well, of course you had to develop the belief. I know we talked about that before we hit record. It's like you were doing all these things, but you didn't quite have 100% certainty and belief. But I'm sure that you've really strengthened that over the past few years on your journey, right? So I like to say that entrepreneurship is self-development on steroids. Yeah. 
um, because you come up against yourself every day. And But I love it, right? There is no cap. It is time and financial freedom, but it's all on you. There is no stability of a paycheck. There isn't the knowns. You're in the unknown all the time. And somebody who I really follow, love his work is Dr. Joe Dispenza. And Dispenza is super into meditation. Um, I now crave it. I meditate two to three times a day. And they're like, you know, 20 minute blocks, sometimes mm-hmm. an hour, depending. But it is true when we connect, when we take the time to have sensory deprivation, when we close our eyes and silence our phones, and we take time to connect within, you connect to that infinite field of possibility. And it's that, that it like, you get comfortable being uncomfortable in the unknown. Because when you get away from trying to control your reality, and you can only control based on past experiences. So again, Mm -hmm. it's a very limited perspective. When you let go of that, and I'm now I've just stepped into this, let the universe surprise you. And every day when I do the meditation, the synchronicities, the things that happen, I'm like, damn, I couldn't have planned that way better than I imagined. (laughs) Business opportunities coming my way. Uh, I've done some corporate coaching, but I've had even more in the last couple of weeks just come to me seeking it for employee benefits, for ongoing, even like patient recovery for chiropractors. It's amazing. And I couldn't have planned that. Yeah, that's awesome. I'm actually currently reading breaking the habit of being yourself. So I love yep. Dr. Joe Dispenza. I've read Becoming Supernatural. Yep. And it is kind of like, I think I put it on my story, like BRB, developing superpowers, because it's so empowering to just think that you can sit there and really manifest, like envision yep. your perfect reality happening instead of living in the past and like reliving all these moments of disappointment and you know trauma and things like that. Like switch it and, and live your ideal perfect vision in your mind And then your mind will have these weird ways of connecting with the universe and manifesting that reality. Like I love that word manifestation because it's so powerful and it's like connecting to that greater power type thing, right? The universe. I agree. And on that note, a lot of people think manifesting is woo woo and new age. Let me just be point like we are manifesting every single day. It's whether or not you're aware of it. So so I like to say you can create your life by design or by default. Mm -hmm. And I you know, I prefer doing it by design, getting excited. And so what I like to call it is I have like a four step process to manifesting, but okay, let me just tell you real quick. The four step process, it's, I I love acronyms. And so I call it the wise method to manifesting. So W I S E W what, what do you want? And then I is being intentional, mindful with your thoughts and your emotions. And this takes a lot of awareness and a lot Mm -hmm. of practice. S is to speak as if it's already yours. Neville Goddard teaches this. It's about living in the end. And Dispenza teaches it too. When you're living from wholeness, when you're not lacking or separated from your desire, you literally will draw it to you because you're no longer wanting this thing. You are it. It. Finally, E is living in an excited anticipation of how it's going to come. Um, you know, whether it's dating and relationships or money or business prospects or, you know, connecting with guests like this for podcasting. I just love how it comes about. Yeah, it's so cool how that happens. I've seen several examples in my life too recently that I, I couldn't have planned it. I just met somebody, had a conversation and it resulted in something amazing, you know, two, three weeks later that I didn't even look for. I wasn't asking for it. I didn't come off with desperation right it just was attracted to me yeah well and now so i'm currently single but i now i really understand also i hate when people say it but when you're not looking but now i understand that from a new lens so when you're in the dating space when you're not on apps trying to make it happen swiping trying to find a matches dispenser would say looking at body parts when you're not trying to make something happen, you're living your best life, you're, you're just loving life and enjoy to meet someone pumping gas or somebody's going to quote out of the blue, want to introduce you or who knows how it will come about. But that's the whole when you're not looking. Yes. And the coolest part about it, I think so many people were so busy. We got one meeting after another. We cram our schedules, right? We don't have time to talk to the person at the gas pump. We don't have time to like stop and talk to someone at the grocery store. But when you create the time and the space and you're open, like, you know, I got an hour till my next call. Let me talk to this person for five minutes in line. Amazing things can happen. You're like, oh my gosh, 
like like how we just figured out oh you're also in denver cool like what part where do you live and like what are you doing this weekend like maybe you're oh you're going to that conference too right the connections and the the things that you can learn that maybe we weren't even looking for right like i think you had reached out to me to reschedule because you know thanksgiving was thrown in the mix in there and like if you had never reached out again like what if we didn't connect until the next year right so everything kind of happens for a reason type thing uh, but I love just being open to the infinite possibilities. I think that's another Dispenza quote. Yes, love it. So powerful. So I know you said you started doing the mindset stuff at an early age, which is amazing. 15, started reading all the books. Of course, you said you had some guidance as well. What's been something that you have really learned that has stuck with you over the years? Because I'm sure your thinking has changed and adapted over time, oh, but yeah. is there like an underlying right. belief or thought that really stuck with you since then? Okay. So I remember, have you heard of the secret? Yes. Okay. So that came out, I'm pretty sure it was 2006. And I remember when it first came out and I watched it and I was like, this is BS. <laughs> this is stupid. I can't the believe music, I just watched yeah. <laughs> that. It was so corny. Right. Yeah. But something in me, I don't know how long later it was. And I have the DVD and sometimes I still watch it again. I watched just it the other day. Show. Yeah. Yeah. But I watched it again and there was something in it. And I was like, I don't know, what if? So I now live from a state of curiosity. I'm open-minded. I like trying new things. I call things experiments because I think that's fun because that's detaching from an outcome. But what The Secret taught me, and I, I do this time and time again. So how many years later is that? Like 15 Yeah, anyway, came out to, <laughs> I don't like doing 06. math on the spot. <laughs> I know. No pressure. Anyway, so one of the examples in The Secret, the movie, is talking about getting front row parking spots. They call him Car, because um, he was British or something. But anyway, I have used that time and time again, and, and people are blown away. Like opening day for the Rockies, I can literally drive downtown, get a the very close park. Yeah, and, and my passengers are always like, how do you do that? Because I'm focused on it. I expect it. I'm grateful for the spot. Um, so that's an easy one to come by. I also, I love doing money experiments because who doesn't like money and who doesn't want more mm -hmm. and just the ways it can come to me. Like if someone asks you to lunch, that's money coming your way, uh, getting free coffee. I love hearing stories about, you know, when people go to Starbucks and pay for somebody behind them. So giving those anonymous gifts, because whatever we give, we get back. hundred percent. That's so cool. And I think a lot of times we feel guilty. I, at least I would feel this way. I don't know if, if you resonate with this. Like, we don't want people to pay for us. You know, it's like that, hey, everyone pay for themselves mentality. I feel like a lot in the US, maybe other cultures, like my mom's from Mexico, my dad's from India. They're very big on don't worry, we're paying for this. Don't even think about trying to ask for the bill. But I know like the US culture tends to be like, hey, let's split it six ways. Everyone cover their own thing. And so part of that becomes like you have this guilt for accepting an invite to get taken out to lunch. I'm like, man, I don't want them to pay 50 bucks for me. You know, I had that before that money mindset or my money belief. But like you said, those are cool little invitations from the universe now where I'm like, you know, this is money manifesting. Someone invited me out. We had this amazing dinner. Um, it was like a $200 dinner for just two of us. And I'm like, you know, th this is kind of cool. Like I'm going to let this happen. I'm not going to feel guilty or like, like I owe them or got to go take them to, you know, two weeks later to, pay them back using air quotes here, but yeah. letting it happen and just being grateful for the opportunity. Cause that's the universe throwing little hints your way. Like, Hey, I'm giving this to you because you put out good over here. You're getting it back over here. Right. For sure. Universe is providing gifts through people, but on that yes. note, guilt is one. I think a lot of people experience, but even worse. And I think it's very subconscious. This is this feeling of being unworthy. I'm not worth a $50 lunch. And so yeah, that's weird. if we're sitting in a space, especially subconscious, so if you're not aware of it, you're not open to receive. And so there's this one meditation I love doing. It's called a heart opening meditation. And so I'll try to explain it since we're doing this via podcasting. But what you can do is sit in the space. You can have music or not, but you literally just hand to hand, palm to palm, stick your hands out in front of you. And literally with each inhale, open your arms out way wide. It's literally like opening your heart center. And then when you exhale, bringing it back in with gratitude that you're open to receive. And so it's just this literal movement 
to open, because you have to, and Dispenza teaches this, he does it a different method, but you have to open your heart space to receive, because mm -hmm. if you're not open to receive, when you're white knuckling life, trying to control it, trying to make things happen, look at, you're not open. And so you literally have to be able to open to it, like your hand out welcoming gifts. Yeah. That's cool. And even I've done a few uh, YouTube meditations where they'll talk about doing it with like the two fingers touching and you're being open, but you're also keeping the energy within your flowing within your body versus like, I love the visuals. So anyone who's not watching this on YouTube, definitely check it out. But like fists closed, if you've got your fists closed, that's a very different dynamic than being open, st stress-free, right? It kind of like almost hurts to keep your fist in a fist for too long. Like you can feel the muscles. It's almost like that. I think of um, it takes 43 muscles to frown, but only 13 to smile, something like that, right? It's easier to just let go and be open instead of trying to be tense and trying to control every single outcome. We just have to like live and let go at some point. You know, and on that no, it kind of triggered when you said that to let go. Ultimately, when we're living in a state of control, it's a fear space. Yeah. Because you don't trust, you don't have faith, you think you have to make things happen. And so that is the power of meditation and going within or journaling or getting in nature or I love running, whatever your outlet is to release that toxic energy and thoughts because it is living from fear. Yeah. And it's, it's tough for type A entrepreneurs. We like being in control. We like seeing the outcome and the results, right? Like, hey, I had an amazing quarter. I did that. I controlled the inputs that led to those outputs. But so it is a little bit weird and woo woo for some people to accept the fact that to get to the next level, you kind of have to let go. You can't be micromanaging every single step of the way because that's just going to burn you out and drain you over time. Well, and again, it's from such a limited perspective because you're doing it based on past experience. So just be open. That's such good advice. So for someone who's struggling with being open, what would be a good first step, do you think? Well, awareness is key for anything. So until you're aware, so, you know, we could talk about it kind of from the breaking the habit of being yourself. You have to become aware. And then it's like not judging, but being coming aware of your thoughts and your habits and be like, oh, you know what? I do numb out. I, I think that's a big one. Figure out your numbing agent. So whether it's alcohol, food, shopping, scrolling on social media, we all have a numbing agent. And uh, most people are afraid to be alone with their thoughts. And so until you can get into a space of being okay and comfortable with just being alone with your thoughts, so I remember back in my 20s, I was a social butterfly. I was out and about probably at least five nights a week. I was super busy, worked full time, going out full time. I, I was never alone, never. Mm -hmm. And I know now I was afraid to be alone with my thoughts because people don't want to get in their head. And now I'm at a space I don't really enjoy going out. I don't love those social interactions anymore because they tend to be low vibe energy getting drunk. It's just not my jam. I now mm -hmm. crave alone time and to be, again, curiosity, but to be curious of my thoughts. And, you know, why do I have that thought of unworthy or not enough? And, and so I think it's just self-reflection, again, no judgment, but just taking that time for introspection. introspection. You know, I feel the exact same way. It's so, it's so funny because as you're talking here, I have so many similarities. I was always extremely extroverted, always going out, you know, parties, working out, going to skydive or do whatever. But um, I think also the pandemic probably helped me realize that when we did the whole quarantine thing, like March, everything was closed, couldn't go to the gym. I had to spend a lot of time by myself. I couldn't escape to three networking events a week after doing a full day of work and all of that kind of stuff, right? So I, I found that I'm like, oh, this is the secret that introverts kind of know. It actually is very recharging and you get to really learn how to be with yourself, be alone with your thoughts. So maybe I had some of that fear as well, where I'm like, I don't want to sit here and just think about stuff. I'm going to go numb out by going to a party or going to this networking event and just talking to people and like not, not allowing myself to think about my own thoughts, but to like just drown myself in, like you said, a lot of low vibe energy uh, conversations that I'm maybe not even interested in, right? 
ultimately it's the distractions that are yes. sabotages distractions we all are trying to distract ourselves and if, unfortunately with phones it's very easy to do that all the time right even in the grocery line for three minutes just pull your phone out and start scrolling yeah my new favorite thing um i put my phone on do not disturb a lot now Me too. and i love it and i i cut myself off at night um around five o'clock i just don't want to be on my phone anymore i don't need it there's nothing I'm gaining from scrolling mindlessly. And, mm -hmm. but again, that's becoming intentional and mindful with my thoughts and my habits, my actions. Absolutely. So five o'clock, how long have you been doing that where you just turn it off at five and you stop checking it? I mean, I guess I, I don't have a lot of what I, I was just finding myself going down rabbit holes. TikTok's a bad one. It's so <laughs> entertaining, but I literally, I, I was just tired of doing that and it, it didn't feel good. And so I'd say that's a newer habit in the last couple months, but it just feels so good. And I'd rather spend that time reading a book or doing my other meditation or, you know, something that fills up my cup. Absolutely. It, it is something that's tough. I'm working on that myself. And I know many people in the audience because your phone is there. It's within arm's reach. You have it everywhere you go. I never leave the house, right? Most people pat their pockets and they're checking for their phone and their keys or their wallet too. Those are the things that you kind of quote unquote need. But being able to turn that off is something that takes a conscious effort of being like, hey, like the day that Instagram and Facebook were down, I found myself opening the app like 50 times throughout the day. And that's when I realized like, oh my gosh, this is how much I use this app. I'm super right. addicted because I'm opening it even though I know it's not working. And you don't realize what you have until it's gone type thing. So when it was gone for the day, I'm like, geez, now I realize like, hey, I need to stop looking at this so much, do my stuff in the morning and then kind of check out for the rest of the day if possible. So it's experiences like that that help us become conscious, aware yeah. of our unconscious behaviors because ultimately that, yes, it, it becomes a habit and you, you don't, it's that mindless scrolling and checking and how many times a day do we check our email, check our phone. Um, and I purposely don't have mine sitting in front of me for it. It's, it's over there on do not disturb. So I have no distraction. hundred percent. Cause I, I know myself, uh, if I see a notification, it's very hard not to look at it. And then yeah. you start thinking about it. And then yeah. I forget what question you asked me or what question I'm asking you next. Right. Cause I'm distracted and it's very important. I think the word intention is, is very powerful as well as presence. I love those. Um, those are kind of some of my mantras lately of yes. being 100% focused when you're doing something, be there. Like when, you, when you're there, be all there, right? Yes. So what's something that you teach some of your clients in terms of mindset? I'm sure everyone's dealing with different struggles, self-talk, mm -hmm. imposter syndrome. Do you have like a framework you guide them through or does it really just depend on where they are specifically in, in their life or career? So I have so many and I, I nerd out on this. And it's funny that how life comes full circle. When I was a young girl, I wanted to be a teacher. And I remember my seventh birthday, my dad built me a playhouse and I used to torture my cousins and brother with the chalkboard. That's what we had back then. <laughs> the chalkboard and I was just always the teacher. And now how I've stepped into this teaching role, again, not that K through 12 stance, but um back to my frameworks, I have so many, but I, I love doing this. And that's how you create tangible resources for people to take away and implement. I'm all about knowledge is not power. Applied knowledge is power. Experience is power. So if you just read the book or you just listen to this podcast, but you don't implement anything, you're not gaining. So one of my key ones that I love talking about time and time again, that is super simple is what I call the thought cycle. It's four steps. Okay. Again, this is about awareness, but step number one is being come up, becoming aware of your thoughts. Then your thoughts create your emotions and feelings. Your emotions and feelings lead to the actions or inactions you take in life. And ultimately all of that creates our results or outcome. So thoughts, emotions, um, habits, results. So you can take this and reverse engineer. That's why I love it. So as an example, let's say you don't, you're not in the financial space you want to be in or the health you want to be in or the relation, whatever your status is, the current result, it's not what you want. Okay. Reverse engineer. 
what habits are you taking? Let's say it's business. Well, are you procrastinating? Are, are you not following up? Um, if it's your health, are you binge eating? Are you numbing out? Are you sedentary lifestyle? Back that up. Well, what kind of emotions are you feeling? Are you feeling sad, depressed, lonely, lost? Figure it out. And then finally, okay, well, what thoughts have I been thinking? Those low vibe thoughts, self-doubt, mm -hmm. imposter syndrome, not having clarity. But if you just understand this four-step cycle, you can change so many aspects of your life. That's really powerful. So I, yeah. I love what you said, the reverse engineer, because a lot of times we're trying to get somewhere, but we don't even know where we want to go. And so once you figure out where is that place, you can kind of backwards schedule, okay, what are the things that I actually need to do today, this week, this month, in order to get to where I want to be a year from now? And on that note, though, so I think it's good to have a, a plan or an idea, or I call a roadmap. That's mm -hmm. great to have, but I think you've got to be flexible and not worry about the how. If you know the end result, let's say you know the lifestyle you want. You want time and financial freedom, laptop lifestyle, or um, whatever you want to be. If you know that, if you can just live from the thoughts and the feelings, this high vibe, gratitude, joy, love, connection, freedom. Yep. If you're living in that, that space, this is something Neville Goddard would teach. When you're living in the end of having that, then letting the how show up. And again, that's where the, let the universe surprise you. Because I think so many people teach that hustle grind mentality, coming up with a plan, sticking to your plan, um, checking it 10 times a day. And I just, I, it's still limiting you. It's one way to do it, but just know there's an easier way. <laughs> and it is tough. I, I find myself too, as I read Dr. Joe Dispenza books, I want to let go and just tap into the greater infinite possibilities and just be like, I can manifest my future by feeling how it's going to feel when I am where I want to be. And it is so different than anything we've ever learned. Cause usually it's like, well, this is your reality. This is your life. That's a cool dream, but you know, that ain't your reality. Right? So thinking like this and being abundant and letting go, it is something that we all need to work on. Cause like you said, that's the easier way as, as odd as it seems to many of us who are like, no, well, usually a plus B equals C. How can a plus meditation equal create infinite realities, right? It's like a different formula that maybe we're not used to. So ultimately it comes down to a paradigm shift. You're literally shifting your model of thinking and your behaviors. And yeah, it, you, it's like, you have to turn yourself upside down, but let me give an easy example. So one way to get a new job is to go on LinkedIn or to go on Indeed, submit your resume to tons of different things. It takes time, it takes effort, and you're trying to make something happen based on a limited perspective instead. If you get really clear on, and maybe it doesn't have to be a specific job. I So I literally did this before. That's how I got my job in oil and gas. At the time, I'm also, I, w I was a paralegal. So I was working down in the tech center. The commute was awful. The job was worse. Hated it. So I just got super clear on how much money I wanted to make. I wanted to be back downtown because I love the energy and the vibe of downtown. I... Um, I wanted a fun company culture and then I just let it happen. A recruiter reached out to me who had this job opportunity downtown oil and gas. It, it ticked it all, the all the boxes and I wasn't out there submitting my resume dozens of times. <laughs> That's so yeah. cool. Yeah. I love that example. It's just, I, I was actually having this call with a life coach the other day that, you know, I'm not really sure what I want to do in 2022. Like, I kind of like what I'm doing, but I want to add something else. I'm not sure what that is. So I was thinking it could be cool to maybe even work part-time or do some consulting for maybe like a company that I love or believe in, like a CEO that I know. And it was funny because I had that confidence. I was like, really, I just have to decide I don't have to apply on Indeed or LinkedIn because I know I can just shoot a DM over and, and create a position or an opportunity. I don't have to search for it. I can create it and manifest it. I had that confidence. And so I told I told her I had that breakthrough for myself. I don't have to go look for it. I just have to decide what I want and it'll it'll happen. So I think that's the key word, decide. Once you decide and you're fully committed, let life unfold. 
That's amazing. Any tips on how to decide? Because this is still something, again, I think many people struggle with of what do you truly want? It's not, I heard this and this was mind blowing for me. It's not how do I get what I want? The question should be what do I want? Because a lot of people, they think they're chasing some goal that they think they want, but they get there and they realize it's not really what they want. So do you have any advice on how to decide or how to brainstorm that? Yeah, connect within. It has to do with your body. What feels good? What feels light? What brings you joy? What excites you versus, oh, well, I think I'm going right. to have to stay in a nine to five because that's stable and that's secure, which it's not, right? Think about layoffs and, and mm -hmm. the current situation and whatever. And so seriously, connect with your body. Your body is your compass. And so what feels good what lights you up? What brings you joy? Again, teaching for me, I love teaching. I love being in front of the camera. I love writing out more or less like lesson plans. So that's the frameworks and teachings. It brings me so much joy. And now I get to connect with people globally. Thank you, technology. Rather than sitting in a nine to five, because that's what I thought I had to do. Yeah. And it is cool for those watch for those not watching on YouTube. We both have like a globe or a map behind us, but you have that the cool um, full map out on the wall, and I have some like steel thing. I don't know where it was ordered from, probably Amazon or something. Yeah. But um, the the fact that we can connect globally, we can connect with anyone across the world at any point in time, spread ideas, share our messages. I I actually just posted on my story today, like super excited for today's podcast. Obviously with you, and I've got another one this afternoon. And I thought how cool that is because a few years ago, I wouldn't have been able to be like, hey, I can't wait to do the podcast today because I'm like, no, I got three meetings that I don't want to be in and I got to drive 45 minutes each way to get to work. So it's cool what happens when you really tune in and what you said there, what feels good and your body is your compass. That's really cool too. Yeah. Yeah. So and we're not taught that. We're taught to live and again, this is from dispensa teachings. We're taught to live in our analytical mind, yeah. logic, making things happen, mapping it out. That's very masculine energy. Also, when you get more into the creative, that's the ease and the flow. So if you could just like life is a dance, just, yeah. Instead of being so rigid and that masculine energy of the hustle and grind, that's why Gary V like, Hey, the dude has done a lot. Right. And I like <laughs> tidbits of him. But I 100% disagree because he pushes that you have to hustle and grind 24 hours a day, make shit happen to make money and be successful. And I'm like, no, there's another way. Yeah, I, I do follow people who have both mindsets. Like I love Four Hour Work Week, Tim Ferriss, Create Systems, Outsource Stuff. Leave your business for three months and see what happens. And chances are it's going to still work if you have the right people in place and the right processes. But I also do follow the people like Gary V or Andy Frisella, people who are like, no, you got to do all this stuff. You got to work Sundays for 20 years and then you can get to where I am. But that what you mentioned there, that kind of resonates more for me because I'm like, that's the better way for me. I don't want to sacrifice 20 years of my life to live in a place now where maybe others will wish that they, they could get there. I want to live that dream life now. I want to manifest amazing time and opportunities like tomorrow I'm going to Breckenridge. We're going to go do a friend and I six hours of coaching uh, for snowboarding with an instructor. And that's the power of manifestation, right? And really being intentional. So the word that stuck out to me there is that's what they believe to be true. So whatever yes, you believe beliefs. to be true is true for you. Absolutely. If you believe you have to hustle and grind and work 80 hours a week, that is your truth. I love that. In, in beliefs, right? It, it kind of goes back to whatever you believe that's what you're going to take action around. So on the, other, on the other hand, if you don't believe something's possible for you, you're not going to take the steps required to get there because you're like, what's the point? It's, it's not going to happen for me. It's impossible. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Belief so cool. is huge. So we've talked about so many great things. Yeah. Mindset's big. Belief. Dr. Joe Dispenza. Um, what would be another, like any, any key takeaway for someone to implement today just to start or maybe if they're already meditating and journaling, what would be something to really hammer, you know, hammer it in? So I think the key takeaway I would suggest is you can go and read all the books and learn. You can spend years reading books and taking courses and attending seminars. I know because I've done it. Mm -hmm. And so all I can say is follow your heart 
and apply what you're learning from whoever it is you're learning from. Life is this trial and error. You've got to figure out what, how you flow and what works for you and um, stay disciplined. It's all about consistency and no matter what you do, it's, I love the metaphor, you know, building your mindset muscle. You can't go to the gym one time, do bicep curls and expect to be strong. Right. <laughs> go on a regular basis to continue creating that resistance in the muscles to have an outcome. That's beautiful. So, I love apply it. Apply what you're learning and stay consistent. That's really the secret to success. And I, I love that, that example of the workout, right? Because if you go one time a week for six hours in a day, that exercise is not going to be as, <laughs> it's not going to be sustainable versus going 30 minutes, four or five times, you know, a week. Consistency yeah. over time yields success. So Heather, I really enjoyed this conversation. Where can our listeners go to connect with you, to learn more, to check out your podcast? Well, I'm on all the platforms. Forms, but my favorite is Instagram. So you can find okay. me on Insta, Heather.hakes. I have a YouTube channel. Again, my podcast is Mind Over Matter. Uh, for resources and, and different things to connect with me more personally, just my website, heatherhakes.com. Perfect. I will link all that up in the show notes and I'll let you know as soon as this goes live. Once again, thank you so much, Heather. This this conversation was amazing and something that I think more, more and more people need to understand and really pay attention to. Yeah. Thank you for having me. Absolutely. Thank you. Hey, everybody. Thank you so much for being a listener to the show and for checking out my message. If you've been here for a while, I'm especially grateful for you. But if you're new here, thank you once again for being a listener. Just wanted to let you know, I help people buy, sell, or rent real estate across the nation in the US. I probably could even help you across the world, but it just gets a little more difficult with time zones and setting up times to chat. If you have any questions at all, shoot me a DM on Instagram. My handle is chrisbello underscore, or you can also go to my website, chrisbello.com slash real estate. Again, that is chrisbello.com slash real estate. Happy to help any way that I can. And thank you once again for being a listener.